Today in the news, we got a huge info dump on AMD's upcoming products. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Navi, and wow, it is an insane weekend so far. So on the last video, we talked about a post on Reddit where someone found some specs for the next generation of AMD GPUs. At the time, all we had were the CU count and bus width for Navi Flounder. Well, that same user decided to dig deeper, but this time through the Mac OS 11 beta code. In that update, he found the power play tables for three of AMD's Navi 2X GPUs, and even some information about a Navi 3X GPU. You. Now, a power play table doesn't give us the whole story, but it does give us some clocks. And if Navi 10 is of any indication, the clocks are likely to be very close to those in that power play table. If not, well, power play mods have been pretty successful in Navi 10. Anyways, let's dig into the findings. We'll start with Navi 21, the big boy. The chip apparently comes in two variants, dubbed Navi 21A and Navi 21B. In terms of specs, we got the usual 80 compute units for 5 5,120 stream processors. And for clock speeds, Navi 21A appears to have a max boost of 2,050 megahertz while sipping a meager 200 watts, and Navi B has a max of 2,200 megahertz at 238 watts. Dropping down to another chip, we have Navi 22. This is the one called Navi Flounder. While it has a considerably lower CU count at 40 compute units or 2,560 stream processors, it has the fastest fastest clock setting in the frequency table at 2500 megahertz. That's pretty insane, and it does so at 170 watts. And lastly, we have Navi 23. It's finally been outed, and the chip variant has a max of 32 compute units for 2048 stream processors. Unfortunately, no clock information has been posted, but at least we know that it has a 128-bit bus for what should be 8 gigabytes of VRAM. All of the chips that we talked about so far would stick to GDDR6 not GDDR6X memory, at least for the gaming market, since the memory clocks for them is at a maximum of 17,424 megahertz effective. You just take the U clock and you multiply it by 16 to get that number. Once again, that's the maximum. As for Navi 31, it has the same ADCU's max as Navi 21, but we don't have any extra information. Now, the power play table information was found through ROCKM for Navi 21 and AMD GPU Pro for Navi 22. In in fact, if you wanted to double check that information, the Redditor actually put a whole tutorial, so check it out in the link down below. With Apple in the pro sector, Navi 2X is likely to have some HBM variants too, so that's nice, but wow, 2500 megahertz as the clock limit? That's pretty impressive. For reference, the 5700 XT had a clock limit of 2150 megahertz on the power play table, and if you mod it, you can reach 2200 megahertz plus fairly easily, but with, of course, course, a massive increase in power draw. Moving on, but still related to that massive leak, we got APUs. So Cezanne, which we talked about on the last video, will have the same graphics configuration as Renoir. So as we already knew, it will essentially be a refresh. If we look at Van Gogh though, the first APU with Navi 2X inside, the leaks point at eight RDNA 2 compute units or 512 stream processors. That's the same number of units and SPs as the Vega 8 equipped APUs, but given Navi 2X X's reported IPC and pretty incredible clock speeds, it's going to be a nice chip. And lastly, for APUs, there's Rembrandt. It would feature Zen 3 cores and 12 RDNA 2 compute units for 768 stream processors. That's the chip that is apparently going to be built on a 6 nanometer process in 2022. So there it is. That is all of the information he was able to gather through AMD's update. Don't forget that clock speeds are not final though, so they can change. But most importantly, don't forget that value is king. Even if AMD is able to match Nvidia's 3070 or 3080 levels of performance, price will dictate where customers flock. And if they price it the same as Nvidia for the same performance, that's not where customers will go. Nvidia has a much more robust feature set than AMD, 
on pretty much all levels, and apparently Ampere is still superior in ray tracing. I guess there's also the availability factor. Personally, if they had the same raster performance and are priced the same, but I can get my hands on an AMD card instead of waiting for an Nvidia one or vice versa, I might pull the trigger to get the one I can put my hands on first. Where do you guys stand on that? Let me know down below. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. It's all the same, all the pain, all the blame, and it's on me. I became all the things that I didn't wanna be. But it seems so simple. One in the bag, one in the drink, one in the...